Hello everybody, Thomas here, welcome back to the Tommy Trials. Tolkien Tuesdays, my favorite day of all the days that we've come up with. Uh, we are doing a lore video. Um, now I may in the future mention that a video is the very first one in the Tolkien Tuesdays. That's because I didn't think that I would get this video done in time. Turns out I'm going to. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into it. So it's no spoiler or shock to say that Shelob is in the Middle-Earth Shadow of War. She was in all of the promotional material and she, you encounter her in the first 10 minutes of the game. But that being said, beware for very minor spoilers for the game anyway. With that out of the way, I am very happy to say that all of the lore versus Shadow of War vi uh, videos will now be scripted, which was actually requested more times than I initially realized. Again, I do apologize for wandering off topic, but that issue should be a thing of the past. Mostly. So, who is Shelob according to Tolkien? Tolkien. I can't talk. <laughs> well, our beloved author is a little mum when it comes to the exact details of her origin, and the only thing that we truly have to go off is that she was born in the Arid Gorgoroth, and that she was the offspring of Ungoliant. So who is Ungoliant, you may ask? Well, I had no idea, but according to the good old-fashioned internet, the true origin of Ungoliant is unknown, and was not even known by the Valar. It is said by some that she came from the darkness itself that lies out, uh, lies about Arda, and was once an ally of Melkor when he looked down upon the world with envy. Later, she changed her allegiance from him to herself, desiring only to be a mistress of her own insatiable craving to devour all light to feed her everlasting emptiness. That's rather perky, isn't it? <laughs> well, from what I have found, before Sauron took the land of Mordor for himself, even before the first stone of Barad-dûr was placed, uh, Shelob spun a dark lair in Ethel Duath, which is Mountains of Shadow, near Kirith Ungol, in the passes above Minas Morgul. For hundreds of years she resided in this mountainous region, making a labyrinth of webs within a network of caves to better trap her prey, which included all creatures great or small. She feasted primarily on those who wandered into the, her webs, although if a particularly juicy morsel was available, she would silently pursue and kill it. Sauron was aware of Shelob's presence in the mountains, but he allowed her to dwell there, for she made an excellent, if incidental, guard for the passage of Kirth Ulgum. Sauron was known to be somewhat fond of her, and in a rare show of humor, was even known to refer to her as his cat. Like a pet cat, Sauron would sometimes give her food in the form of prisoners that he had no more use for, or servants who had displeased him. That's awesome. Really should call a jar about that one. Reports of the massacre made by Shelob would be carried back to Barad-dûr to further please the Dark Lord's humor. She would also eat the orcs that manned the Tower of Kirth Ungol fairly regularly, however, as she was a more efficient guard for the past than they, Sauron actually never made any serious attempts to stop her, though the orcs would occasionally try to barricade her lair with stones. At one point after being set free from Mordor, Gollum stumbled into her lair while attempting to escape the barren country. She caught him, but he survived the encounter with Shelob by promising to bring her tastier meats than he was. The orcs in Kyrathungal had seen him on several occasions and believed somewhat jokingly that he was too thin and wiry for Shelob to bother eating. Uh, Gollum would attempt later to fulfill this promise by leading Frodo and Sam t into her lair and abandoning him them. His hope, which we know from the movies, was that once Shelob finished consuming the two hobbits, she would throw away the ring with the other parts of the hobbits that she could not eat, allowing Gollum to retrieve it. The two hobbits eventually happened upon a passageway that was too choked with Shelob's dark cobwebs to proceed, but as fortune would have it, of course, Frodo's sword Sting, being of elvish make, was actually able to slice through them. Using the file of Galadriel, they managed to fend her off the first time, Erendil's star, the, 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 I can't talk, it's okay. Erendil's star, the light from the file, caused unbearable stabbing pain to Shelob's darkened senses, but she returned to attack Frodo, poisoning him with her stinger in a surprise attack just as they had reached the exit of the cave on the Mordor side. Sam then assaulted the creature using Sting in order to save his master, who lay poisoned after Shelob's surprise attack. In a pitched battle, Sam managed to stab one of her great eyes, injure her leg, and pierce her great belly, the most grievous wound. Sam was lucky, though, as Shelob caused this wound herself when she tried to stab him with the venomous stinger in the underside of her abdomen. 
Uh, none had ever managed to wound her that bad before. It's not actually known if Sheila recovered from the battle. The only thing that Tolkien really gives us is um, when Sam wears the One Ring, he can hear Sheila bubbling in her misery uh, because his sense of hearing is vastly improved by wearing the ring. Uh, while her fate was unknown, her offspring, which were lucky enough to escape her hunger, because she would eat her own offspring, that's a nice mama, isn't it? Continued to produce new generations of spiders. Nests of these spiders are known to have existed in Mirkwood. Uh, at some point after men took dominion over all the world, however, the great spiders disappeared. If Shelob did survive her encounter with Samwise and Frodo, she was the last of her kind in Middle-earth. Uh, I found most of my information at, um... Lord of the Rings Wikia.com, which there'll be a link to that, the, the specific Shelob uh, part in the description below, as well as from the Tolkien Illustrated Encyclopedia by David Day, and obviously the Lord of the Rings. So, do you see anything missing from this story? There's a small little detail about Shelob having the ability to switch into a woman and having good intentions. It was never a thing. She was never anything more than a really really big spider, and I, I mean one one can of raid ain't gonna do it. But to be fair, being the spawn of a demon thingy, it's not outlandish to propose an ability like this, but in my opinion, they did take a rather established character and give her a really funky backstory. Uh, if you do manage to unlock the Shelob Webs collectibles, which is spoiler for that in case you care, uh, you are granted a little story about her having some sort of funky physical relationship with Sauron. Yeah, uh, that never happened. On the plus side, however, at least Sh Shadow of War does plop her into the correct location. That's, I mean, at least that. Nonetheless, I honestly, it makes no sense why she would attack Frodo if she was an individual, the individual that wasn't fully evil and wanted the defeat of Sauron. It simply does not make sense. Uh, so, it, it, it's a clever thing to do with her character, it's not outlandish, but in Tolkien's lore, she's just a spider. Uh, Sauron refers to her as his cat. Uh, so, you know, not the most clever. She goes to that cave, and she never leaves it. She eats things that come through the cave, but it's, it, it's, it's a little little outlandish what they did with her character. They could have just as well have come up with a brand new one plopped in as compared to making she loves something she wasn't. But nonetheless, that is the differences between she loves actual backstory and, of course, uh, what Shadow of War did with her. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, go ahead and like it if you appreciate anything good in the world. Lord of the Rings, uh, puppies, happiness, world peace. Um, you, you know, really cute things. Think of really cute things and then go ahead and smack that like button for me. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, of course. That always does help. Uh, because every Tuesday we're going to be doing some kind of token something. If we're not doing a lore video specifically, then we will be playing a video game that is located in uh, the token universe. So Shadow of War, Battle of Middle Earth, and so on and so forth. Many, many more. Uh, but until next time, guys, Jake Hardy.